Fortune and Strife features subjects which can be uncomfortable for a general audience, such as the use of drugs and alcohol, poor treatment of people of different classes or cultures, adult situations, psychological trauma, deprivation, survival, natural disasters, and violence. Listen to discretion advised. In addition, these next few episodes of the show contain cultural and historical content based upon the peoples of Asia and the Far East. We are coming at this from a place of respect and genuine interest and a love of these cultures, places, and history. We may not get it 100% right all the time, and we ask you to bear with us and give us the benefit of the doubt, and we would let us know when we get it wrong. We want to be an ally in dispelling Orientalism that has affected the Asian and Middle Eastern communities around the world. Welcome to Fortune and Strife. I am Robert, or Bayoshi Shinichi, and I'll be your host and narrator. I am Chini, and I am playing Toji Ken. I am Tyler, and I am playing Akoda Ricci. Hi, I'm Eric Schock, and I will be guesting in as Ide Minato. Let's play some L5R in the Burning Sands. So Akoda Ricci is standing in a small tent as the caravan is prepping for its defense and rapid retreat back into the empire of Rokugan. Ricci stands over a strategy table uh, hastily erected with a very crude map of the small valley area that they are entering, and uh, various uh, unicorn samurai are standing around, leaders of various cohorts of the army that he is to lead. And Ricci takes a moment and points to a couple of areas and says, this might be a location for a holdout. We could probably set up some of our archers here. How many, how many peasants do we have that can hold up any, any sort of weaponry? And getting an unsatisfactory answer, Ricci grunts and says, well, we'll have to do the best that we can here. But... Uh, I think the the most important part is making sure that we get the information back to Rokugan. It is our job to hold the line where we can. And the Unicorn Samurai, again, nod as they've heard this countless times over the past few hours. Ricci's confidence maintaining, but on occasion wavering with the overwhelming forces that are arriving. Meanwhile, on the other side of the camp, uh, Doji Gen, having just finished her goodbye to her uh, assistant and her love, uh, Sueno, has come to seek out Akoto Ricci to say goodbye to him before the battle forces them to part ways. And so she comes across the camp She's dressed for riding. She has a saddlebag over her shoulder. And she reaches the command tent uh, where Ricci is speaking with the unicorn. And she uh, gives the traditional clap that one among the unicorn have been making before they uh, ask permission to enter the tent. Uh, It's Gen. Ah, Gin, yes, come on in. I see that you're ready for your ride. Gin enters the tent and ducks her head, looks around and says, uh, yes, the uh, swiftest riders among the unicorn have prepared their horses and we are ready to go. Excellent. Uh, there is something I, I wish to, to speak with you about. Um, and he'll look up to the other unicorn and says, uh, if you'll please, uh, you know, excuse yourselves for a few moments while I discuss some more private matters with Doji-san here. And the unicorn, uh, again, give their nod and a little bit of a a strange look amongst each other as they exit the tent, leaving Ricci and Gen alone. Who would have thought this is where we would end up, right? 
I don't like the idea of this being where we end up. It's an awful long way from home. But you said you had something for me? Yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, Ricci kind of ruffles around in his uh, medicine bag and pulls out a, a small scroll. And uh, with it, uh, walks over to Gen and uh, offers it to her and says, uh, this is a letter for Kitsuki Mayuki. Uh, just make sure it gets to her. She takes the letter, but she gives Richie uh, a questioning look. Um, I would like to do a sentiment check on Richie to find, to see if I can figure out what his motivation might be for giving me this letter. In particular, she's trying to figure out maybe what his thought about what his role in the battle is going to be. Uh, what, would, what would that be? That would be sentiment air, you think? Uh, it could be sentiment air. Yeah, air is a good one for that. Okay, so I will. I will. Would you like to know the TN, or would you like to get a void point? Considering this is a PvP, or this is me going against you, do you want me to uh, have an idea of what I'm rolling for, or just guess it? I think I would prefer to know the TN, but it's your. You know how tightly uh, Richie is holding his secrets. Gin and Richie know each other fairly well, and Gin is definitely more attuned to how Richie reacts. So I, I think you would absolutely know that Richie's vigilance is a four. All right. Well, let's give this a crack then, okay? Um, actually, I rolled on Sentiment Air, and I got four clean successes. So let's hear it. You know that Ricci is planning on making his return back to the Empire. Uh, this is something that the both of you have, have talked about uh, on, on numerous occasions. But you also know that Ricci's greatest dream is dying in defense of the Empire. And this is as big a threat as he's ever come across to the Empire as a whole. So his countenance of, about this he's not sending a message or a letter back to his family he's sending a letter back to his loved one to let her know that you know that's it not not to wait for him but to continue being happy and you get a more of that feeling as uh when you go to take the the scroll from him his hand is shaking she takes the letter and she tucks it into her sleeve and then she pauses for a moment with a very thoughtful expression. She purses her lips as she's weighing Richie's tone. She doesn't say anything about it. And then after a moment, she says, Richie's son. Yes? I said that the, only the very fastest of the unicorn... Uh, we're planning to leave to take these to the Empire and, and myself. And that means that I have to leave Sueno here. I've spoken to her about this. And I've asked her to stay with you for the fighting. We know that the Khalif uses assassins in his forces, and many of those going with me are those among the unicorn who are trained to deal with such, such people. You will need her to look after you in case the Khalif's forces send an assassin after you, because it would send these, this group into complete disarray if you were taken out that way. But she is my heart. And I'm begging you, Richie son, please, please to look after her and help her live. Richie just kind of reaches up and starts 
rubbing at his chin a bit and starts thinking and I I you know I, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and, and return the favor here. Uh I want to do a uh sentiment check uh back to to kind of figure out what your your goal is here is whether or not to to protect uh Sueno or if there there's something else going on here. So I think I'll do my sentiment against your uh, your vigilance. I think I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go Earth to recall a piece of, of uh, information about Sueno. All right. Well, if you want to do a sentiment check to figure out that... Um, I will absolutely let you do so. Um, she is being tricky, but on the other hand, uh, Rishi does know Gen equally well at this point. So you would be using a, uh, a vigilance for as well to determine whether or not you can figure out why she's doing this. So with my roll, I only got two successes and two opportunities. So that's a shortfall of two. So uh, Ricci uh, nods and, and says, that does seem to be a very reasonable request. Uh, if you are looking after me, then uh, I certainly am, am happy to, to look after uh, Sueno-san. Uh, she is just as, well, not just as, as uh, helpful to me uh, as she is to you, but uh, she has done a lot for me ever since I've, I've met her back down in, down in, in the Empire. So yes, you, you have my word. I will look after Sueno as she looks after me. And so with that, I'll spend my two opportunities, uh, one of which uh, I would like to reduce Genstrife by two, as, as you now have the, the word of Ricci uh, to, to back it up. And uh, with that one, I'm also uh, just being a little more uh, cautious on how I've been wording things. Uh, and, and it, again, can tell Ricci's making an attempt. <laughs> Appreciate it. So I'm going to do one more thing because Gen did lie in that. It wasn't an entire lie, but she did lie. So I will attempt to make it so, you know, we'll find out if I actually managed to pull the wool over your lies on that specific lie because uh, it wasn't, you know, she wasn't told to stay behind. Gen is leave again is leaving her behind so i am going to do a courtesy air check on that i think that's the only one that really applies to basically trick ricci into uh why she's doing this <laughs> or uh, trick ricci into into believing that sueno actually was forced to stay behind um okay so let me check that so I rolled courtesy air to do that, uh, do that lie. Um, I ended up with a total of uh, two strife and five successes, which I think exceeds your, your vigilance. It beats my vigilance of four. Uh, she, she says that uh, Sueno has to stay Basically, there's no hiccup. It, it doesn't seem like a lie at all. Um, however, I am going to take this opportunity, since I'm trying to persuade you that to look after Sueno, to please uh, to use my doji school ability to add some more opportunities on top of that, on top of that role. Okay? Sounds good. I am going to... Take that opportunity, and I am going to 
used two of my four opportunities to negate the strife off of that roll. Unfortunately, it's air. I can't do very much helpful to remove uh, remove strife from you otherwise. Um, but I am going to use those two opportunities to do a cadence. Uh, I will Ooh. cadence a secret message to you that uh, is hidden and basically says to Richie without saying it all out uh, two things. That Gen truly believes that he is the best person to do this, that he has the skill, he has the honor, he's strong enough, he, he really has Gen's full faith in what she's doing. So that's part of the secret message that she's sending. Not saying straight out, but just you know, sliding in there. All right. And the other part is desperately trying to convey to him that she wants him to live. She wants him to look after Sueno, bring Sueno back for, to her, but also she really wants him to live. And that's her, that's her secret message, kind of hidden in there. Uh, if anyone is okay. over-listening, they can't hear anything about that. And, you know, sometimes these are things that we don't, we don't talk about flat out. But, again, is uh, commuting, communicating her feelings to you through cadence that she could not say straight out because we are proper Rokugani samurai. And Ricci just uh, nods and says, Yes, I believe Sueno by my side will be uh, very helpful. Uh, to the point it might change a few things I was planning on. And he'll walk over to the strategy table. And you can see there's some really crudely drawn figurines. Uh, or not drawn, but uh, sculpted figurines on the table. And one that looks like it would represent a, uh, just, a, again, a very poorly, uh, like, whittled down lion. Uh, he moves it away from one of the smaller, like, uh, choke points that, that's clearly visible on the map. And he just starts moving it a little bit further, closer to the edge, uh, to where the empire is. He says, I think that... That'll probably be the better strategy now that I think about it with a, uh, a very uh, skilled combatant at my side. Uh, uh, again, deeply, deeply bows and says, then I look forward to seeing you again, Richie son. I... Make this promise to you now, Doji Gen, that the first round of Soju in the Empire is on me. I'll bring snacks. And with that, Richie just lets out another laugh. Uh, just one you haven't heard in, in a, a while. Just a, a good, deep belly laugh. And uh, says, uh, thank you. Sincerely, again, for everything. And I do intend to see you back in the Empire. <sighs> she takes a deep breath. Bishamon be with you. May all the fortunes be with us. They have been before. And she winks. And heads out. And the wind whips at the tent flaps. And the calls of the various sentrymen around the camp start to make a, a known that the emir's army has been spotted. I'm Robert Orbaishi Shinichi, your host and narrator, thanking you once again for listening. 
Remember to catch new episodes every Monday. If you want to catch them early or are looking for more bonus content, please consider becoming a supporting member of the Patreon at patreon.com slash court games. I am Tyler, and I've been playing Akoto Ricci. You can find me on my personal accounts on Twitter, at Churcher Games, or on Twitch, also as Churcher Games. You can find the show on the web at courtgamespod.com, on social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram under Fortune and Strife, and on Twitter at L5RFNS. If you would like to contact us, you can email the show at fortuneandstrife at gmail.com. This is Jeannie, a.k.a. Kikita Kaori, and also known as, at least today, Doji Gen. You can find me at my blog at the Winter Garden of the Kikita website, along with helpful materials for the RPG, and also on Twitter at White Fails or on Facebook. If you like, I am also found on the Court Games RPG podcast as a writer for Emerald Legacy, or check out The Table is Yours for fiction readings of the FFG stories. Hi there, I'm Eric Schock, and I will be guesting as Ide Minato. This has been Fortune and Strife, a Court Games production in association with D20 Radio Network and the Rokugana Historical Society. D20 Radio, your gamers roll. www.d20radio.com